I have a question. If you lived a life where you didn't limit what you believe you could do, what would you set out to try? That's my question. Think about it for a second. What would you set out to try if you didn't have the fear of failing? I wanna ask you guys a question. My first question is, what, can, picture back to where you were a child. I'm talking young child. I mean, I can almost not even think that far back because I just, I don't have a good recollection of my childhood, but I do remember one thing where, where I would watch my, my nieces and nephews grow up and how they were when they were children, like as they, are, as they still are. And one thing that, that, that always kind of sticks out to me uh, about children is their ability to think that anything is possible. And I find that, you can see their imagination. They will make cars fly. They will make the most bananas fight each other. Whatever it is, everything is possible to them. And they can think it up, it's going to happen. It's possible. Now, somewhere between childhood and where we sit right now, whether that's later childhood, whether that's teenagers, whether, whether that's young adults, whether that's however old we are, a lot of us, many of us lose that ability to do that. I don't know where we lose this. There's something that's programmed us in, in childhood to start think, thinking negatively. I think we live in a world sometimes where we think negatively a lot faster than we think positively. We actually expect the worst before we expect the best. I don't know why, but it's something that it feels like we're almost programmed to do in the way that we've been raised through life, through school, through, through work, through career, through whatever it is. Maybe you're someone who wants to start a business. Maybe you wanted to start that business for quite some time now, but you just haven't been able to get over that first kind of hump just to actually start that business because maybe you think about, oh, maybe I'm just not qualified for this. You know, I don't have the schooling that I should have for this. Maybe you think that, that, that if I start a business, I don't know how to do this, so I'm probably going to fail in that area and, you know, give it a couple of years and I bet you I'm not even going to be able to, 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 to actually run this business and be profitable. You know what that is? It's, it's us being afraid of failing. And oftentimes you see that all through life, a lot of the time. Where, I don't know where this starts, somewhere maybe even in, in grade school, where we now start to think that we can't do something because we're limiting ourselves. There's no reason why we can't do it. It's simply just because of the negativism that we have in our life. And negativism is one of the biggest things that creates such a limiting factor in our life. You know, so we're scared of failing. The fear of failing is something that is so huge in our life right now, and we fail so often. We do. We go through problems in life that, that, bring on, that bring on circumstances that maybe we're not ready to handle. And maybe we feel like we failed, but when we get back up, we see, keep going. Failure is a part of life, but you only fail when you stop actually trying. When you let failure beat you and you stay down, that is failure. You go through hiccups sometimes, you'll trip yourself up sometimes in different problems in life. But the biggest thing is that you get back up and you keep going forward because that's where the success comes from. But the fact that we failed so much in our life and we continue to do so, it actually has a huge impact on our own self-worth. Many of us have such a fragile self-worth now simply because we limit what we believe we can do. And when we limit what we, we can do, it makes life really hard. And you fast forward and many of us find God and we, and we start an amazing relationship with God and, and, and that relationship goes into things that we never thought was possible. But if we're not careful, that programming of limiting what we think we can do ends up being the same thing that we put on God and we actually limit what we think God can do in our life as well. All of us do this at different times in our life if we're not cautious to, to not make that little hiccup. And it actually makes us more inclined to doubt the promises that are in the Bible as well about healing and deliverance and restoration and all the amazing things that God says that your life can have and does have. We actually end up limiting that and, and having a harder time believing that simply because we have this fear of failing, which is makes such a fragile self-concepts and, and, and all these things that we believe. Which then you fast forward a little bit, a little bit more and now you, now you live your life constantly bouncing between unbelief and belief in God because you believe in God truly, but it's really hard for you to grasp the really in the, the, deep, the deep beliefs of healing and, and, and God healing us from, from diseases and sicknesses and, and, and whatever it may be that we're dealing with, whether it's fear, whether it's loneliness, worry, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, you put that problem in there and God can heal that. He can. So we as, as people, as Christians, need to stop limiting what we think God can do in our life because it honestly sets us up in a place that makes life a lot harder. I have a question. 
If you lived a life where you didn't limit what you believe you could do, what would you set out to try? That's my question. Think about it for a second. What would you set out to try if you didn't have the fear of failing? And if, you, if it happened to go that way where it didn't work out, you're like, whatever, man, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Or I'm going I'm to succeed at some point. Because that's what it comes down to. It's believing that you're going to be successful, believing that you're going you're gonna to do it, despite the fact that problems come. You know, when preparing for this message, I uh, read this one verse over and over again. It's a little bit of a longer one, but I want to read it to you guys. And this is just one chapter that focuses on one of God's promises over our life when it comes to safety. And this is just one thing in the Bible of many, 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 many verses that we should be getting inside of us because when something happens to us, if you want to say when the enemy throws something at you, whatever it is, when life becomes life, whatever it is, this is something that we should fight back with and believe this over the fact of the what ifs in life. Psalms 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, on him I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor the arrow, the evil plots, and slanders of the wicked fly by day. Nor are the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction and sudden death that, su- that surprise and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only a spectator shall you be, I love this, as you witness the reward of the wicked. Only a spectator. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the most high your dwelling place, there shall no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent. He will give you his angels, a special charge over you to accompany and defend and preserve you in all of your ways of obedience and service. Chapter 12, or, uh, verse 12, they shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent shall you trample underfoot. I'm almost done, but it's amazing. Verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, this is the Lord speaking, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name. In the Amplified Bible, there's a bracket in brackets right after that. It says, we have a personal knowledge of his mercy, love, and kindness, trusts and relies on Jesus, knowing that they will, he will never forsake us. No, never, ever. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Last verse, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That chapter is loaded. It is crazy. And that is something that we need to believe in, in our life. If we believe that Jesus is there for our, for our well-being and, and to, to heal us and to be there for us, read that verse. Even if it's just about safety, it's crazy what it makes you believe. And I'm focusing on verse 14 where it says, he has set me on high. He will set me on high. This is why God wants to set you on high. And what is being set on high? I had to look this up because I was like, what does that mean? I want to I further understand this. God's goal is to make earth look just like heaven. Remember what Jesus said when he taught the disciples how to pray. Everyone, a, lot of, a lot of us believers have, have heard this prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So because you are seated with Jesus, when you become a Christian, we're seated with Jesus in heavenly places. It's, it's a weird way of saying it, but just, just grasp onto that. God wants to make your earthly reality, so every day, your problems, everything you go through, he wants to make your earthly reality look just like what it would look like if you were in heaven. If you know his name, if you are his child, then God wants to set you on high in every circumstance in your life. Every single circumstance in your life. That's right. I said that perfectly. Every single circumstance, in every situation, in every place, in every problem. Every single one. The fact of the matter is all we need to do is believe it. It's time that we, we as Christians take our eyes off the problems in our life. Take our eyes off the circumstances that, that we go through that, that aren't ideal. Maybe the pain that, that just really grips us. It's time to take our eyes off of that and put our eyes on God who has every single answer to anything you will ever face in your life, ever. We Christians need to do that. It'll change your life. Like I said, four to six weeks is a habit 
and you can make that habit of thinking positively, rejecting negativism, and being in a place where now you think the best of your outcome. You think you have so much hope in you that you can't even bear fear even walking in because you're like, no, I know my life is gonna get better. It might suck right now, but it's gonna get better.